Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca, and this is part two of the NHL Replica Jersey History Series. The other videos can be found in the Jersey Series uh, playlist as well. They'll be in the description below as well as linked at the very end of the video. So please check those out to get the entire timeline and to get all the details. Next jersey we're going to look at is special because it's not a team jersey. It's actually an all-star jersey. And uh, the reason I bring this one out is because it's the only CCM one I have. So this is a World All-Stars goalie jersey. Remember, they had four jerseys for this event and two for each team. But all four were on the ice at the same team. So the goalies had white versions and the players had dark ones. But anyways, so this is a CCM. This is in the 2000s at the Toronto All-Star Game. So as you can see, CCM made in Canada. There's the logo. Again, I also wore this for as a goalie, so it's pretty dirty, puck marks. So look at the front patch. It is a nice patch, but it's not sewn on. Sorry, it's not sewn on. It is just glued on. And we'll look on the inside to prove that. And there you go. Now we'll look at the main crest itself. As you can see, pretty solid NHL crest. See if I can. Yeah, pretty solid NHL crest. And again, not sewn on. And this is uh, on top of the stripe. So you won't really be able to see it through here because there would be another layer. But again, not sewn on. This jersey is kind of interesting because it will have this tag, which should look familiar. There's the Airnet tag by Sport Masca. So CCM, is <laughs> their jerseys are made by Sport Masca. The Coho jerseys are made by Sport Masca. Um, if you couldn't tell already, they make the jerseys. I think at this time, Coho was owned by CCM. I'm not 100% positive but I thought it was under the hockey company umbrella. But again, I'm not 100% positive on that, so take it as you will. And so we're just gonna look at the back really quick. So this one has that CCM embroidered logo and the NHL puck. And on the sleeve, we have the CCM logo again. So as you can see, there is the CCM ones were white, uh, the Coho ones were the, uh, the dark jerseys or the thirds. For this, I think they were all CCM. I'm not positive because it was the All-Star game. But I, I wanted to show one off anyways. And so that's about it for this one. Oh, actually, sorry. One last thing is the cut is square with no cut there. It's just all the way around. So the next jersey we have here is a Coho National Predators uh, replica third jersey. It's, it's something. I think that's the best I could say about that. But this jersey is interesting for a few things, and there's that's the only reason it's actually here. But we'll go over some details. Coho logo, made in Canada, right there. The logo itself is a pretty decent logo. As you can see, lots of details on it, lots of colors, all embroidered with no stitching into the jersey itself. And we look on the inside. And you can see no stitching. It is multiple layers because it has that weird blue background, but that's about, that's for that. Uh, it does have the shoulder patch, which is one of the reasons it's here because I want to show off. It does have the nice embroidered shoulder patches. These are not sewn in, but this one does have uh, multi-layered elbows so you can't tell. But if you look really close, you can see it's not actually sewn in, it's just glued on. Um, so we have the Coho logo here and on the back, we have the NHL puck, and we'll go inside. Once again, we have, uh, it's kind of destroyed, the Airnet Sport Masca jersey. Um, now, there's some, the interesting things about this jersey is the collars is a new cut, as you can see. And we're, again, we'll go on the back, look at the Coho jersey. And this had a very different cut to this jersey compared to the previous ones. And this happened when all these really crazy uh, replicas came out, or sorry, not replicas, third jersey. So the Canucks, one with the gradients, it was that too. The arms got bigger on the arm. So, and it had like, they just became a little bit like different in that sense. But the big difference, and hopefully I can get this on camera, is the duck tail. So, or the platypus tail, as some people call it. 
start it out here where the back of the jersey is lower than the front now some people hate this and like Sidney Crosby gets his cut off so it's flat all the way through on his current jerseys because they still do that. Now the side is still not cut here but the important thing to note about the sides of this and how it's longer at the back is I believe this was the first transition to the edge jerseys because if you remember the edge jerseys have the longer backs and a slightly different cut whereas everything before was square this one is not. So I think this style of jersey was the tipping point until they went to the newer, uh, like the newer, the newer ones. And as well, I'm, the arms are were more tapered as well. So they they got bigger and they tapered off, whereas the previous ones were pretty like straight cut through. Um, but yeah, that's about it for this one. We'll go on to the next one now. So the next jersey we got here is Montreal Canadiens. Centennial year, this was 2009, as you can see by the logo. And this was, this is the first uh, Adidas rep, sorry, Reebok replica jersey I have. This one's actually my girlfriend's, hence the size small. But, so we're gonna go over this because this is the new cut, but it's very interesting because it's a different material. So first we'll look at the, the tag where, as you can see, just a Reebok made in Indonesia. Everything looks normal there. And we'll go to the logo really quick. So it's embroidered. As you can see, logo is pretty good quality. But when we look on the inside, there's no stitching. So again, that stitching didn't, uh, didn't carry over. Or the lack of stitching did carry over to this generation. Now for the shoulder patches, we get these awful screen printed uh, patches with like no embroidered detailing at all where it's just like a printed material on but they are sewn on which was I guess the one nice thing as you can see right there but the quality drastically dropped we now get the Reebok logo on the back um, we get the Reebok logo on the sleeve we also get the jock tags this one has an inner tag as well but it's not sports mask as you can see anymore which is unfortunate um, so yeah, there's nothing in there, just washing instructions. And this is the first time that we see, well, first time in the examples I have, that we see the cut down the side. Now remember, even with the duck tail on the Predators, wasn't cut one piece. This one is cut. And see if I can show it. I'm pretty sure this one has a longer back as well, and it does. So as you can see down there, this striping is longer at the back than the front, so it, the duck tail carried over, and the new style cut of jersey carried over as well. Now, the interesting thing about this jersey is that it's not the normal Premier replica jersey material. It is basically air knit. As you can see, this is a pretty good quality. And one of the reasons I was okay with buying this for was because of that quality. I'm not sure why they did that for this one. I'm thinking it might be something to do with the colors on it because it all is one layer with the colors on top. So maybe air in it lends itself to that better than the premier material does. But regardless, this one was an air knit uh, premier replica Jersey of the Adidas one. And again, this one came out in 2009. Now here's another very odd Jersey in the sense of the NHL uh, replica, basically history. This jersey came out in 2000, for the Winter Classic in 2011, as you can see. It is, again, like the Montreal, the previous Canadian Centennial, it is an air knit material, as you can see like that. But this has a lot of strange features on it. So we'll go over those. First, we'll look at the tag, just to show it off. Again, this is one of my girlfriends, so hence the small. So interestingly, the... Uh, patch the winter classic patch on the side is embroidered and it's a great patch it's the real patch but it's not sewn on it's just glued as you can see on the inside so it's really weird when the year before or sorry two years before these were screen printed and sewn on and yet this one's an embroidered patch but just print glued on it's one of those like it's really odd to me that these things can come out after each other and this, the differences are pretty astonishing in my eyes. They never really carried over a specific design set 
from what I could see. Now I know these are the Winter Classic ones and they're special because the material is different and everything like that. So maybe they want a little bit more quality, but regardless, that's still how I feel about it. So we're gonna go over to uh, the, the tag on the arm for the Reebok is odd because it's just embroidered onto the jersey itself instead of a patch, as you can see there. So this patch on the Montreal one wasn't sewn on or anything, it was just pressed on, where this one just the logo embroidered into it, which is slightly odd. We do have these nice twill numbers with stitching, but again, we'll have to look at, see if they're real. And these ones are actually stitched on. So as you can see, the number was, sorry, the star was actually stitched and embroidered into the, uh, stitched straight onto the jersey itself. Again, that happens up here, as you can see. And we have this very nice logo, which is all made of twill and embroidery. And it is stitched on, which again is a very odd thing when we have all these previous ones that don't have that, then we have this one that does. So there's again, some more odd things about this jersey, but we're just gonna look at the back really quick. So as you can see, the Reebok logo is just embroidered straight on there. The stitching, not an actual patch like before. And no ducktail. <laughs> so I'm trying to get the bottom of this. So there's no ducktail. The actual bottom of the jersey is completely lined up. This is a more square cut and a more vintage style of cut. On the side there, as you can see, it's not split. It's all one piece. So this is, again, one of those things where it's like NHL makes multiple cut jerseys. And I know this is for the Winter Classic, so it's probably why it was done like that. But it's really frustrating because it's like, what, what are they following? This doesn't have the ducktail. I liked these qualities. I thought the quality jersey I thought was pretty good. I would be totally thrilled with this if this was how all premier jerseys were. Because this one was even better than the Montreal one, which had the same materials. But this one has the sewn logos. So that was the benefit there and the better patch. But that's it for this 20, 2011 Winter Classic Washington Capitals jersey. So that's it for this part of the NHL replica jersey history. There will be another part after this one. And so that uh, will be available in the description and at the end of the video as well. It can be found in the jersey series playlist. Uh, so thank you for watching. In the description, check out the written uh, posts on my website which will have pictures of all these jerseys and have a bit of a breakdown on them that will just have all the parts put together as well and I hate to do this but please check out the description and subscribe to me on YouTube follow me on Twitter and on Instagram helps helping me get more followers helps me get more products so I can do reviews on or talk about them for example, I wanted to end this video with the Toronto Maple Leaf St. Pat's jersey because it's the newest one out, but I can't get a hold of one. But anyways, again, thank you for watching and check out the other videos in the description. Take care.